Greetings, unsettled souls. Ghost! Welcome to the Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. the Ganji doing political commentaries for the media streets. Welcoming you to hit share and to hit subscribe, friends. That is how the show grows. And it's growing by leaps and bounds. We have syndication interests now in the show. Um, the studio is being updated, which is why I'm still down here. Um, the studio is going to look really nice when it's done. And uh, we're looking to upload a lot of the gear as well. I should say update a lot of the gear. But that is not why you have arrived. You've arrived to hear about Fukushima. You've arrived to hear about all things nuclear. And uh, unfortunately, friends, uh, I've got a lot for you. I say that because uh, whenever you have a lot of things dealing with Fukushima and nuclear issues, it's not good. Um, this is from uh, the JAIF.com. It's the Japan Atomic Industrial Forum. I want to go over the way this is worded before I go into the way that it should be worded. Listen to this. Fuel debris at the Fukushima Daiichi 2 mostly found at the bottom of reactor pressure vessel. Now, for those of you that don't know... Um, this this impacts your health in a major way, even if you are in America. Um, I'm in America. I'm in Ohio. This affects the health greatly. A lot of our food comes from California, and a lot of the food coming from California right now is toxic. Um, you need to know that we've experienced a melt out, which is where the core blows out into the environment, which is uh, what the mystery black goo was that you were seeing all over the streets of Tokyo. Um, then, there, of course, there is the meltdown. We all know what that is. And the melt through, which is when the radioactivity goes through the containment vessel. Um, to what extent, we don't even know. Well, every small bit of this that comes out, it has an effect. And that effect is to poison the human body. Listen to the way they worded this. On July 28th, the Tepco Electric Power Company, that is GE, so pull all of your money out of GE if you're invested in it or in a mutual fund that it's in, released its evaluation of the results of an experimentation on fuel debris in Unit 2 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. They carried it out using cosmic ray mound measurement technology. Most of the spent fuel debris, fuel that had melted on the accident, appears to be at the bottom of the reactor. Now, I hate that they use the word fuel because technically that's what it is, but it tends to make people not really realize what, what they are. Imagine that this pen is a radioactive fuel rod, which is what the fuels are. You put them, I know, sexual content incoming. You put them in the hole and they release an amount of radioactivity over here. And that radioactivity then is used to turn turbines which turn water to steam and give the power, the nuclear power, uh, its name. It generates the power for the city or township or whatever. Well, if these fuel rods are not removed and then kept cool in fuel pools, then they will release radioactivity into the environment. And uh, if it happens while in a reactor, which was what we're talking about here, that is the globs and uh, the uh, cancer-causing, life-destroying elements that we're talking about here. Um, they conducted their experimentation with a joint project of High Energy Accelerator Research Organization. That's CAP. That's the way it's in Japanese. That's the acronym. The distribution of materials is calculated, of course, on the mounds, mounds transmittance. It said, uh, despite some uncertainty, listen to this, in the range of a few tons, some 20 to 50 tons remain in Unit 2's reactor core. Now, what's interesting about that is they don't know what happened to roughly 30 tons of radioactive material. And if you think that that doesn't matter... Look at the cancer rates that's going up in California, Oregon, and uh, Washington. Look at the fact that there are no tuna that is being caught in the Pacific Ocean that has not shown signs of radioactive poisoning. You're eating it. Okay, look up. We're eating Fukushima poisoning. You can find the fish with cancer sores on their mouth getting ready to be served as food. Um, about a hundred and... Um, 
it said that that compares to about 160 tons of fuel assemblies and about 15 tons of control rods that were there before the accident. So we've got 20 to 50 tons left out of 160. This is the better way to word it. I found this on the Fukushima diary. TEPCO admits that molten fuel is transferred in multiple places in reactor two. That's exactly what it says. Um, TEPCO has been implementing the mound scanning investigation and it describes the research result and it's, uh, it's highly unlikely, highly likely that a major part of the molten nuclear fuel remains in the bottom of the reactor with structures in the inside of the reactor. They also, it says, detected a part of the molten fuel on the wall of the reactor. This means the molten fuel was separated and remaining in different locations. Still glowing hot, poisoning everyone, by the way. Um, 300 tons of radioactive water per day. TEPCO did not mention the percentage of detected fuel. No, because it started out at 160 tons. Do you realize how many tons of fuel that is? Do you realize that all of that is affecting your health today? Whether or not you're going to get bone cancer. Look up what strontium-90 does. Strontium-90 does. Look it up before you call me insane. Okay? This, this matters. And I want you to to let other people know that this matters. Sticker Junkie knows it matters. And uh, when you go there, we're going to be going on here in a minute. When you go there, let them know, hey, I heard about the correct views on Sticker Junkie on checkout. Go ahead and put in uh, correct views or the correct views. You're going to get the most amazing stickers you've ever had made. And you're going to get more of a discount because you told them you heard about it from the correct view. Um, this is from OxfordJournal.org three-year retention of radioactive cesium in the body of TEPCO workers involved at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station accident. Now pay attention to cesium here. We're going to get to that in a moment. Pay special attention to what I'm saying about cesium. Uh, the abstract for this is that direct measurements of, highly, of seven highly exposed workers at the Tokyo Electric Power Company, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station accident, have been performed continuously since June of 11. Cesium clearance in the monitored workers is an agreement of the biokinetic models proposed by the International Commission of Radiological Protection. So basically, they have found cesium being uh, up, uh, uptake at high levels in just three years. Now listen to this. Let, let, let's, let's not let them gloss over this. Let's look at really, what it really means. This is a whatisradiation.com. Effects of cesium-137 on the human health. Research done by Yuri Bratosinski and his colleagues and students in Belarus during the period of from 1991 to 1999, of course, dealing with uh, Chernobyl at that time, and we're still dealing with it today. Look at the birth defects in Belarus, if you don't believe me. It correlated a whole body radiation levels at 10 to 30 becquerels per kilogram of whole body weight. And uh, with ab that amount gave uh, abnormal heart rhythms and levels of 50 becquerels per kilogram of the body with irreversible damage to tissues of the heart and other vital organs. So people are saying, oh, I'm not afraid to die. I'm just going to live in California. Let it kill me. I don't care, right? It doesn't just kill you. Did you, did you hear what I said? It damages your heart. That leads to a whole bunch of issues. You're alive, but you're not well. You're always in the hospital. You have heart trouble. You may need oxygen. Basically, your body shuts down real, real slow. So it's not a matter of, oh, I'm not afraid to die. I get so pissed off when people say that. No, it's not a matter of, I'm not afraid to die. It's that you are going to suffer and suffer and suffer because of these things. And they gloss right over it as if it's no big deal. And uh, for those of you that don't know what a Becquerel is, that's, a, that's very important. A becquerel is one disintegration per second. What's that mean? Each disintegration is a tiny little speckle. Uh, for uh, putting it in layman's terms here, um, the atomic particle, think of it as a little speckle. And that speckle explodes. And if that explosion hits another cell and that cell mutates, that becomes cancer. That's one of the great things about becquerel counts. And depending on what it is, it can do so for many years. In some instances, like plutonium, uh, it could do it uh, for the rest of all eternity, for all intents and purposes. Um, this is also uh, mitigating the effects of cesium-137. In order to mitigate the effects, um, one needs to accomplish three things. 
accelerate the rate at which the radionucleides pass through the body, repair any damage done by the free radicals, and that's not always easy to do. And um, uh, eating a nutrient dense uh, green fruit. Uh, yeah, obviously we know that. We know that um, um, selenium is amazing for this. But it does not get this out of the body and does not prevent it from doing the damage that it does. And one cesium-134, friends, isn't a whole hell of a lot better. So what am I saying? I'm saying you need to do a number of things. You need to avoid food from the West Coast. You need to avoid food from Japan. You need to not eat food out of the Pacific Ocean. You need to not live in Oregon, Washington, and California, particularly on the coast. You want to be real careful what you're eating if it comes out of Hawaii. Um, you want to hit at least uh, 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day. That is extremely helpful. Again, it's not a cure, but it's helpful. Um, you want to pour your money out of TEPCO. You want to do everything that you can to stop subsidies to nuclear power plants. So pay attention to how you vote. Um, because, friends, these things matter. Okay, it can, ha it can happen here, too. And we're going to get to it here at Fukushima Watch. Fukushima in New York. Uh, this nuclear plant has regulators nervous. Uh, one of the correspondents on the show, Giselle, was talking to me about this too at another one. Um, it could happen at Fukushima just 35 miles north of New York City. It could. That's what many activists and former nuclear regulators, that's important. Nuclear regulators are people that work in the industry, okay? They know what they're talking about. They fear that the Indian Point Energy Center, and this is their job to know this, these are nuclear scientists, damn near rocket scientists. Uh, so same, kind of, uh, same kind of training that you would need to be a rocket scientist are uh, these regulators. Nuclear power plant, the Indian Point Power Center, has operated in Westchester County for more than four decades. That's extremely unstable, friends. The plant provides a good chunk of the energy needs for the surrounding area, but it has come under fire in recent years for safety and environmental concerns, including its warming of the Hudson River and a recent case of bolts missing in one of its reactors. That sounds wonderful. There's a link to it right there. The plant's two working reactor units are currently operating on expired licenses, with the New York, with the state of New York denied parent company energy water permits due to suspected violations of the Clean Water Act. Uh, let me pause for a moment and explain what this means. This is why you tune in. Uh, first and foremost, this means a problem because these plants were only regulated to run for a certain time in a certain way. And if you think it doesn't matter to change that, then look up wind scale and look up what that did. Also, um, they want to extend them past their life after they are found to already be literally falling apart, bolts missing out of the reactor unit, and uh, they've poisoned the water because they can't contain all of the, uh, the uh, misgivings, even when it's running properly. In the new documentary, Indian Point, currently in select theaters, filmmaker Ivy Mirapol uses the plant to get into both sides of the nuclear debate. Murapur, who is also a director of the up-and-coming second season National Geographic series Years Living Dangerously, he tours Indian Point and Fukushima both, and she profiles plant workers and executives, along with um, anti-nuclear activists, environmental nonprofits, and a former chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, she found herself, she said, almost giddy that she was there. She couldn't believe that she had gotten this kind of access. And it said that the plants get the original 40-year licenses to operate, and then they reapply for another 20 years. What I found surprising was how limited the scope was that the NRC looked to decide whether or not it can be relicensed. Keep in mind, if something goes bad, this poisons uh, New York City, for crying out loud. Uh, plutonium would poison it for the rest of all, all recorded history, for all intents and purposes, something like uh, half a million years. All of these issues that the public is concerned about aren't addressed, like whether you can evacuate. 20 million people living in the danger zone around Indian Point, and there's just no way to evacuate. So we have evacuation route signs all over the place. They practice for evacuation. They are silent testing. 
But everyone in Greece, it says, including most first responders in the transit area, that they could not evacuate. You know what it's like at rush hour. So let's pause again. In the event that they have a nuclear meltdown, they cannot get everyone to safety. And yet they want to run them longer when they are showing signs that they are already in danger and not being run properly as is. Um, it goes on that this is just one example of what is not even taken into account when the NRC decides whether to plant to be relicensed. Re so they don't even think about that. That's not even a factor as to whether or not you can get people out of the city or out of the area if it melts down. And then you wonder why people are anti-nuke when the evacuation plan isn't even considered when talking about relicensing and renewal of licensing to run these dangerous things that should never be open, then maybe you're on to something that, you know, that they need to be closed down. She said, I started to think, well, that just seems crazy to me. They're so narrowly focused, importantly, obviously, on just the functions of the plant. But they look at how long the plant is aging. Are they replacing parts in a timely fashion? Are they looking at things that are degrading? In other words, as long as all this happens, they think they can contain it. So all of that's really important, but there are other issues like the evacuation plan that the population has grown since they started the plan. So keep in mind what might have been a perfectly workable evacuation plan 20 years ago may not be the case now. Um, it's hardly addressed at all. Um, the takeaway from Fukushima, she said, it was incredibly chilling, and the plant itself is very strange. Strange, you don't see or smell or touch the radiation, so you don't know it. But there's this whole process of getting completely suited up. So this is the kind of danger zone that we're looking at here in, um, in America. It says, in the film, the thing that winds up most jeopardizing the fate of the plant is this giant prehistoric fish, the Atlantic sturgeon, and it says it becomes a major player. The sturgeon was just recently put on the endangered species list because of how the Hudson River is changing. So we were trying to make that point that the more general way, that it's about all fish and the whole ecosystem. In other words, there, things work upwards, okay? Man is high on the food chain. When the fish are showing signs that they are being poisoned due to what's being done to the water from this nuclear power plant, well, things move upwards, friends. That, that means that's what's coming to us. That's why they do very limited studies on things like insects and mice, and they can run through generational damage and see what it does. That's one way of testing it on people. Friends. It says, do you feel more nervous about living in New York now that you've seen done this film? And she says, it's funny. I've been asked that question before, and she doesn't because uh, she wouldn't be able to do this kind of work if she was constantly terrified of it. Well, I'll tell you what, um, that would quickly change in the event of an accident, I can promise you that. And that brings us, friends, to the Dumby of the Day. <laughs> the Dumby of the Day, brought to you, friends, by the Seacrest Motel. And there you see it. And why am I showing you that? Because the Seacrest Motel is where you're going to want to stay if you're going to see the point this year. Do I have anybody listening to this that enjoys roller coasters like I do? Because if you do, I've got news for you. That's the place to go. The Seacrest Motel is going to give you a room at a fraction of the cost that you're going to pay anywhere else. And when you tell them that you're a listener of the correct views, you're going to be staying. You're going to be staying there for an unbelievable rate, saving your money maybe to ride this ride. Look at my mouse. It's the big wheel. That's the gatekeeper. That's a wicked ride. Right there's the wicked twister. You can see it, uh, the yellow in the back. You're going to be going to the park for a fraction of the rate, friends. This is the dumb of the day. Newprofessional.blogspot.com. And this is why uh, Ron Paul, a number of years ago, wanted to get rid of the EPA. And people thought that he was insane because they do so much good. He was saying it would be better if these were handled at a state level. Why? Well, for one thing, the people of the state of New York might have a lot more say in such matters that we just talked about in the last story. Well, also in issues like this, they're clearly not helping anything here. Apparently, the uh, this is the EPA is oh I got over myself there. The EPA in the USA is trying to allow hundreds of times more radiation into your drinking water. Now we've covered what this means. This means more cancer. This means more sickness. This even means little things like more susceptible to the common cold. How much do you enjoy having a cold? 
Well, these are the sorts of things that allow that to happen prior to the heart disease, cancer, bone cancers, brain cancers, lung cancers, and all around damaged heart. 50,000 messages, food and water watch supporters sent back in March. It wasn't enough to keep the APA from caving into nuclear industry pressure. Now the APA is moving forward with a guidance to increase the amount of radiation allowed in the drinking water. It's not just a slight increase they're proposing. We're talking about the equivalent of 250 chest x-rays per year. Now do me a favor. Let, let, pause and let me take you on a little bit of history here. First of all, radiation and x-rays. People say that it's not harmful. It's not harmful if you just get hurt or something happens to you. I had uh, vertigo once, and uh, thankfully that never came back. Uh, vertigo is oftentimes caused by nothing. Well, they had to roll out stroke and MS and all of those dangerous things when I had it. So I had to have an x-ray, checks x-ray, head x-ray, it's fine. No damage done. 250 of those is not particularly a healthy way to go. And if you don't believe me, I'll pick up Frank Zappa's book. Um, in it, he talks about uh, the old shoe store that his parents would take him to. I do believe it was his mother. And you could put your foot in the shoe and your shoe in this machine and it would wait, give you an x-ray of the bones of your feet and he said that he spent hours doing this well it's interesting to note that uh uh frank zappa died of cancer a particularly aggressive cancer that wiped him out very quickly it's also important to note why they're doing it because many of you don't know this nuclear power plants are toxic even when running correctly tritium escapes there are what's called routine nuclear releases look them up the poison the environment cancer rates are through the roof near any nuclear power plant that's active and the best way to say oh it's not hurting anything is to legally change what is defined as hurting anything so instead of using medical data and facts Instead of using what we know about radioactivity to dictate this, they're going to use the dollar, the almighty dollar, and they're going to use that to justify raising what is safe. That way, the nuclear power plants can continue to kill us all and uh, not be held accountable. The EPA quietly dropped the news of this so-called protective action guidance. There's some reverse wording for you, a la 1984 happened earlier this week, and they were hoping that we'd miss it, but not a chance. We've only got a short window of opportunity to make a big impact. They want you to send a message to Barack Obama, which I'm going to do as soon as I get off air here, and the EPA do not increase the limits of radiation allowed in the drinking water. Right now, if a disaster were to strike like a fracking truck spilling radioactive race water near your water, or even a nuclear disaster like Fukushima, we would be protected by the safe drinking water act that limits uh that are already in place but the epa wants to drastically increase that limit up to a few years after the immediate response to an emergency isn't that interesting the new proposal would force people to get the radiation equivalent checks raised five days a week 50 weeks of the year up to four years it says there's no reason that limits were imposed there's a reason that limits were imposed in the first place High levels of radiation, which this is, are dangerous. There is no justification, read this, for exposing people in high levels of radiation, emergency or not. For the EPA to consider higher radiation level amounts is not only irresponsible, but dangerous. Nobody should have to consume highly radioactive water, no matter the emergency. The nuclear industry has been lobbying, that is using your tax dollars, no less, to increase the limits for the long time. A similar proposal first came to light at the end of the Bush administration. So friends, that's what you do. You go right here, you open it, and you sign it, right? Because this kinds of things matter. I've got it open. I'm going to be doing it as soon as I get off air, which I'm about to do now. Friends, you've been listening to The Correct Views. This is your massive Fukushima update. And you can donate to me by The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. My studio's being redone. I'm going to have all the lights and all of that back up running in no time at all. It might take a couple of weeks, but it's coming. All the news that I do is paid for by you. And you can help me by going to the correct views of hotmail.com. 
or go to Patreon in my link description below. They take a cut though. So, you know, either way, however you feel more comfortable. Thank you, friends, for watching. Hit share, hit subscribe, find me on Twitter, find me on Tindall, and uh, good night, friends. God bless.